Last year, I dropped a blueprint on how I got my first 10,000 followers. And after that, I dropped a book explaining how I got my first 30,000. But Instagram's algorithm has changed a lot since then. So here are the updates that you need to know about if you're trying to grow on Instagram right now. So the first major change is that Instagram's barrier to help from their algorithm has roughly doubled. What does that mean? It used to be that on Instagram, if you had good engagement, once you got about 3,000 followers, Instagram's algorithm would really start to push you and start to help you. Your page would kind of explode if you had good engagement in around 3,000 to 3,500 followers. What we've seen now though is that that's roughly doubled. Instagram's algorithm is really not gonna start to push you and help you until you've got good engagement and about 6,000 followers. So my buddy Scott, he's had incredible engagement. He kept asking me like, dude, what am I doing wrong? I'm at 4,000 followers, I'm at 5,000 followers. Instagram's algorithm is really not pushing me like you said they would. Once he hit about 5,500 followers with that good engagement, then the algorithm picked him up. I've got a subscriber on YouTube, same thing. She's at about 4,000 followers right now. She's like, dude, I'm not getting a huge push yet. What's going on? It seems like their barrier, instead of being around 3,000 followers before the algorithm starts giving you lots of views and lots of exposure, has doubled. It's about 6,000 now. And secondly, last year, Reels used to be the no-brainer to post. If you wanted to grow on Instagram, you had to post Reels. What I'm seeing this year, though, is that that's not necessarily true. Reels do work for some people, but photos work better for others. So really, it's not that reels are a no-brainer anymore, it's that you need to test what's best for your page. Is it gonna be photos? Is it gonna be reels? Where are you getting more exposure and more growth? And on top of that, I just wanna say, last year I talked a lot about how you could abuse reposting reels to get lots of views. You could take someone's viral reel, repost it on your page and get millions of views. That's not the case anymore. Reposting has been nerfed and reels in general have been nerfed, so it's not as easy to get a million views as it once was. Original content is really what's gonna carry you further today. And a big part of that is just that Instagram has more users posting content today than it has in years. You've got more people making reels that you're competing with than there were two years ago. Everybody all of a sudden is a creator to one degree or another. So with all of this saturation, another thing that I've seen is it's not as easy as popping off in the algorithm and just staying sort of popped off staying on top of the algorithm. It seems like now there's a lot more like kind of peaks and valleys, like a lot more fluctuation in the people that have big pages even. It seems like because there are so many people that you're competing with, it's no longer guaranteed that once you get to a certain point, Instagram's algorithm is just gonna carry you. You can still fall off, so you've gotta deal with those peaks and valleys more. And another big difference that I've sort of slowly started to notice is that the old forms of engagement that were really indicative of if you got good engagement on Instagram, are just not weighted as heavily in Instagram's algorithm as they used to be. I'll see big pages with a crap ton of likes, a crap ton of comments, even like my buddy Scott, but they're not getting carried as far in the algorithm as they might have a couple of years ago. Part of that is obviously just that there's more kind of competition on Instagram today, but I think the other part of that is that Instagram is starting to weight other forms of engagement a little bit higher, things like watch time. So I think now when you look at things like ghost followers, it's almost becoming a little bit less important to remove ghost followers because the only ways that you can really identify ghost followers are with likes and comments. And those things are being weighted worth less and less. So it's becoming harder to sort of fudge Instagram's algorithm by doing things like removing ghost followers. And another thing is that for the past half a year or so, everybody and their mother has told you to post carousels if you're gonna post photo posts. I was one of those people because for a while, carousels just wildly outperformed photos. It was like a no brainer. What I'm seeing now though, is that that's not necessarily true. I have single photo posts outperform carousels all the time. I think it really does depend on your page, but more importantly, the actual content of that photo. So I guess what I'm saying is Instagram's kind of leveled the playing field. It's no longer post reels, post carousels. It's kind of like post everything, figure out what works best for you everything is on more of an equal playing field than it used to be. This might be off topic just a little bit, but I really think that Instagram is actually in a pretty solid space right now. Like it is harder to grow on the platform right now than it has been for the last couple of years. But overall, they're not making any algorithm breaking updates. They're not just copying updates from TikTok or features from other apps. Like they're actually innovating and it's a lot more stable than it has been in a while. So even though Instagram is not super easy to grow on, it's not in this kind of volatile transitionary time period, I think that Instagram is really, they're looking up going forward. They're looking great. And the business that I manage the marketing for, the bike shop, we actually get most of our exposure, most of our impressions from Instagram. And let me just say this, even though it's gonna make all the other kind of YouTube Instagram growth channels wanna kill me here, but yo, follow for follow still is one of the greatest ways to grow in my opinion. If you abuse it, it really can screw over your page. 
Like you can hurt yourself with it. But honestly, what I, what I found is that's still one of the best ways to outpace your competition and get consistent growth on Instagram and build up that kind of core fan base or that core demographic that you wanna get in front of. Um, if you guys wanna learn more about the follow for follow method, this is the ebook that I mentioned before. Just click the link and it'll let you download it. I explain it in more depth there. And then the last point of today's video, which actually ties into the first point I made, is that getting onto the explore page of Instagram is not quite as clear cut, simple, and easy as it used to be. I've talked about how in the past, if you would go and you'd click view insights on your photos, you could see the different areas that your photo got in front of. And if you got three to 800 home impressions after you posted a post, there was a very good chance that you're gonna start to get it on the explore page. Well, with the bike shop's Instagram that I managed, back when we had like 600 followers, we were getting on the explore page. We didn't have anywhere near that amount of home impressions. And now we're getting between three and 800 home impressions and we're not getting on the explore page. So it's not as clear cut of a system as it used to be. I think the bar is kind of raising a little bit and I do think that there's a little bit of randomness. I think that Instagram's algorithm still likes to kind of test here and there. Like this is a small page, we're gonna throw it on the explore page for 10 exposures and see what happens. So it is a little bit more random. The bar is raised, there's more competition, but honestly guys, Instagram is looking like a great app that has another five, 10 year run inside of it. So shout out to Instagram. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.